This video explains how to assemble our hinge photo frame that holds a 4 by 6 inch photo. The SVG includes three different frame panel options as well as six different sentiments. So I call this the uh, hinge photo frame. Uh, it's for a 4 by 6 photo. Um, the only reason I call this that is because of the way it opens. So I'm going to show you. So I have the reason I have one already pre-made because I'm going to show you how to add that little back easel and the different options so you know. But I call it easel frame because, or, or the hinge frame, because it's like that. So you could put, theoretically, and I, I'll show you on this one. I already finished this one. This is a finished one, and this is with the scalloped edge. But I've just put a couple glue dots right here. So I can open it and I can change the photo if I want. So these aren't, you know, I'm not using uh, removable, but you can use removable. These are just a couple little glue dots, or you can glue it shut. But you can see it has a little, um, little easel on the back to hold it up. You, can kind of see, you can't see it from there. But So in this particular file, it comes with, here's who, Wolf, Meow, Fun Times. And there's three other ones, loves, family, love, family, and friends. So these little things are included. So they're meant to fit this way um, with the portrait mode, but you can use landscape. You can make them bigger if you want to. So this is this one is in landscape mode. It's going to show you that. Um, and we're going to do that afterwards. So we have three different types of frames that we're putting together. And the reason why is it comes with three variations of these little frame uh, edges. So the scalloped, I call this the jagged, and then um, the default one, which is rounded. So if you look here, it's rounded. Um, so that's what it comes with. And then here's one. So I only cut out the friends and um, I'm sorry, the fun times. So I'm going to use the fun times. And uh, it's either the blue or the white. I wasn't sure which one would be it, but it's three colors. So it goes like this. So they all layer similarly. You just have to layer them together. Let's see if I can I have to have it the right way. So once you get them lined up correctly, they'll all go together like that. So we'll put this one together. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to use blue or white, but I think it's going to be blue. So that's why I cut out both. Sometimes you got to cut them out to see how. Depends on the what the picture looks like, but fun times for the for the photo I'm going to put in there. So well, let's get started. So we have these are the pieces. So the default pieces are this front, and these are the back pieces. One I'll explain both of them. One to hold the photo and one to help line up the uh, the easel piece. So we'll do the easel a couple times because I'm going to do it on that cat one that I showed you earlier. And um, this is the default. It comes with rounded corners. So there's also a frame like this. I don't have it. <coughs> you don't necessarily have to cut it out, but there's a frame that lines up that's just this shape. It has the corners, rounded color corners. And you could put that on top of this and it'll line up exactly like this. But I chose not to use it because I'm just going to put this on there. You don't need it. If you're going to keep it the same color, if you're going to keep the front frame the same color, there's no need on the rounded version to do that. So I hope that makes sense. Of course, you could always email if you get confused. So I would say let's go ahead and if you're just using the rounded, we have uh, a little panel frame for each of these. So I'm going to put this on it first. So let me go ahead and put this on. It's easier to glue these on when they're flat. You can't, I mean, you can do it, but the other ones I put on afterwards. And I'll demonstrate that after I put this together. But you could put it on first if you wanted to. So I'm just making sure that there's equidistance in the middle 
so the spacing's good on every edge in the middle there and that'll uh, make it even on the other sides too. So I just print this with the digital paper. So then we need to fold it. So as I'm folding it and I'm gluing it more. So make sure you get some good crisp ed edges, regardless of whether you use a perforated uh, score line or a solid score line using like a score tool, especially if you're using something like a Cricut score tool because they do not score well so you want to run over it with like a bone folder or something like this. I did not use the Cricut to do this so I have very crisp fold lines. I used my StarCraft Solo <clears throat> to kiss cut a score line. It just cuts a score line, solid score line. Um, sometimes it cuts a little deep but I like it. It makes it really easy to fold. So we're going to go ahead and just glue these. So you want to do these long sides first. So we kind of need to know where this edge stops. So right there, you see that? So we're going to put glue, and you can see that gap right there. I'm pushing in from the side. I'm not going to put it all the way. I'm putting the glue all the way like this because I saw what kind of edge there was. All the way down here. You can put it on the tab, but I want to tell you that once you fold it over, it could get in places you don't. It doesn't matter really if you get it here, you're not going to see it on the inside, so you could do that. I usually get it off all over my fingers, so I'm folding it underneath. We're going to be doing this a couple times, so. And then I'm pushing it in, and I'm making sure you can see there's, it's lined up, has a, you can see it's even, so you can see that I'm lined up well. Just going to go ahead and reach in and apply pressure on the tab with my handy dandy wooden chopstick. So I can do it on the other side too. Get that moved out of my way. And you could use something like score tape to do that. Put score tape here and fold it over. The problem I have with it is that once you place it, it's really sticky, so you have to be very accurate. So I like the wiggle room of a wet glue. So I prefer that. So fold it over like that. And I'm pressing in the side just to make sure it's even here. Turn around. So I'm just making sure it's in place. So I'm just kind of pressing in because that tab on the inside is hitting the other side. So then once I know it looks even to me, then we can gauge it by this little line here. Then we can reach in and apply more pressure. I like this frame because it is compact and they're pretty easy to make. Once you make a couple, it gets easier. And I can open it up in the back if I want to change a picture out. But if I don't want to, it'd be easy for me to make another one later on. So it's not a big deal. So I'm going to show you how it would be if you put the glue on this and why it's a little bit difficult. So some people might be able to just put the glue on the tab. So for this one, you could put it down here, but I'm going to try, I'm going to show you doing it, the glue on the tab. We also want to add glue right here in this little, this little triangle thing. You see how it's angled here? We're going to go like that. And same thing here and that's going to add glue so we can glue this on top of that so you always want to do those long sides first and then the short side for this particular design so i'm going to go ahead so this is doable i'm just not and this is a better one to do it on just because if you do get glue where this edge um, it's not going to show because it's the opposite side so i'm just going to flip it over but i just don't like getting oops Got to add glue to these little corners. So my glue flow just kind of slowed down for a moment, so I make sure I get these all get it back to wet. And I want to be somewhat generous with this glue because we can't let reach in 
to apply pressure. So I'm going to fold it under like that. And as I'm folding it under, I'm going to push these edges in right here. This is where using regular glue works. So I want to push these corners in so I can get it lined up nice and clean on the sides and apply pressure there. So that glue that we put in that little section and applying a little, um, little pressure to keep it there. So it's, you don't have to do a lot, you just want to hold it for a bit. We'll do the same thing on the other side for repetitive. Otherwise you get a, kind of a gap if you don't do that. I'm sure I have a gap on the other one, but it's the inside. So I'm going to add, add glue down here this time because I'm not a fan of getting glue on my fingertips. And then add glue on these little corners again. So just right here, you see right that? Again, that's just to glue it onto there. You don't have to, but I like the look better. I tried both ways. I just didn't like it. Because, you know, this is not a new design idea. It's just the way I'm implementing it. So I'm pushing it for the right, and I'm pushing in for the left, and pushing in right there at the same time. And then, and I'm also applying pressure on the whole thing so we can get that bottom adhered. So you do want to take the time. So this is the back side of it, the inside. So the other side is the front. The front's fairly clean, right? Because we've already put that on there. If we don't hold it long enough, see I have a little gap right there. Just gonna add a little glue in there. And for the most part, nobody's gonna see that. That's just I'm just helping with the, the corner. And it kind of gapped a little bit there, but not enough to really make a difference. So now I'm gonna find this piece right here with the little cutouts to hold the the photo. Just like that. We're going to fold it right there. And we're going to go ahead and it doesn't really matter because I'm going to still going to it still goes like this regardless of whether it's a, a landscape or a portrait photo. So we're going to glue this edge to a long side. So I'm going to add the glue on this. So I know a lot of people make photos for shadow boxes and everything, but uh, I mean make the frames for shadow boxes. But I just wanted to make it for photos, actually. So I'm going to make sure that this solid part is in here. I'm going to fold it over and we're going to line it up to a side. So I'm just lining it up. I wanted a good glue coverage so it would line up well. That creates that hinge that I'm talking about. It's my own terminology. <laughs> so I'm just going to, I'm rubbing that until it gets adhered and then right here. So as I was saying, um, if we want to make sure we know how we're going to put this. So we're going to use this for a, a landscape a photo or a portrait. So either way, there's two things you need to know. So if I was going to do portrait, I need to determine what's the bottom of the picture. So wherever the bottom of the picture is, is the way this goes. So I'm going to kind of put it in because it's dark paper. But there's these little cut lines, and I'm just making them white so you can see them. There's these little cut lines in this back piece. So if this is the bottom of the picture and you were portrait, you'd want to put it like this. If you want to make it landscape, just going out of focus, we want this to be the bottom of the picture. And then this part would go down here. 
So the little L part is the bottom of the photo. Okay, and that just helps you line this up. You're going to line up. And it's where we're going to glue it. And those lines are to help you line it up. So that's the reason why. So we're going to make it a landscape photo. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put it this way. So I have this little photo that I'm going to use from a balloon fiesta in Albuquerque that I went to years ago. And there's these little cut marks here. So there's little slits. Oops. So you could have glued the back already, but I'm going to just put this in so you can see. Visual is always better. It's just taking my time because it takes a second to get into the slits. Okay. So if you want to give this as a gift, obviously you could shut, uh, close this up. But this helps center the photo. So let me make it a little bit more centered. So I'm centering it in. So you see like that. So now let's go ahead and add this back part. So I want this to be right here, the bottom. That's the bottom of the picture, right? So that's where I went with how I want to glue it on the back. So you can go ahead and just glue it like this. If you're going to add things and remove, then make sure you stay clear of these little edges. It's going to kind of be hard to just put a little glue in the middle to hold it. But I mean, they're really thin. It's hard to get them in and out, I'll be honest. But I gave it enough room so I could slide another photo in. Should have gotten on the edge of this. Here. Oh, that's the inside. Never mind. That's where we glue on the inside. That was fine. So now to place this, if it's landscape, it's like this. So we put this, we fold this back. And for the American Crafts textured cardstock that I'm using, I would use 80 pounds or heavier for this. If you needed to use a thicker paper, always use this if a different color. If you're using a lighter paper on the frame. But I don't know if 65 pound would really hold it. But it is pretty light frame. So I'm going to line it up. You see how I line it up? And I'm lining it up at the top to straighten it out. My The cut's way straighter than my pen mark. And then I would glue it right there. And the same thing if you went here. You just fold it, line it up right there, and there. Okay. So this, we're going to go landscape. And I'll show you back of the other one I already have finished that's in portrait mode. So this is just helping you center it and get it in the right place. Make sure you get that good and secure. And then it just angles like that. You can see from the top. And there it is. So there's that one. So let's go ahead and put the fun times together. Because it was fun times. So when you do any of the words, you have a solid background, a middle one that's going to be lighter, and then the top one that has the cutout of the name. So I would go from back to front. So always put the glue on the one with the holes. So I'm giving it a little, when I'm putting the glue on it, um, make sure that you go give a little space around those holes so you don't have glue showing through. This is where a fine tip applicator comes in play. And I'm just going to line it up. I'm going to start, you can do it from either side. I'm started on the left. And then I'm just kind of lining it, moving it around in place. So it's lined up well. And you can tell with the lighter color on the other side if you didn't get it lined up well. It's pretty lined up. And then the top one, this is where it gets, depending on the one you use, um, you really want a light edge of glue. You need to have a light hand 
because you don't want you want it to stick but you don't want to see the glue coming through so I could put little dots in little sections like that So again, there's six of these, six different options, or you could just create your own. I'm trying to get it lined up, lines up pretty well. And this goes pretty good with that picture, don't you think? So I'm going to go ahead and See, I made it, like I said, the width of this, so you can put it this way if you have a portrait. But if you have a landscape, you could put it at the top, or you could put it at the bottom. So I'm going to put this one at the bottom, just based on the picture I have. So I'm just going to glue, I'm just kind of eyeballing where I'm going to glue it. So um, just basically... So it makes it easier when you're doing one on port portrait mode because you can glue these across. I'm just going a little bit further down. So if there's glue on the back side, I, I won't see it anyways. Just personalize it. You can make it bigger too or you put it in the corner. I'm going to do that with the other one. So there's that one. So it's fun, and I didn't glue it shut yet. Um, then this one, I'm going to glue it shut. So I, I mentioned that there's three different variations. So there's this frame rounded, this one that we're doing that's jacket, jagged, and then this one which is a uh, scallop. So we're going to go ahead and put this on here. So these are the three variations in the file because I just can't stop making frame shapes. I stopped at three because I thought, oh, that's an easy way to change a shape on the front if I do it that way. So make sure you dry fit this first. It should fit on either way, but I would just dry fit it. This jagged one, it should be I just had it the way I wanted. And be careful too, I did a print. I had to make sure that I, when I did this, that I printed it, I cut it correctly. So I knew I needed one, this one landscape. So I had to kind of shift my cut so the hearts were the right direction. So before I had the hearts this way. So when I cut it out, so just be mindful of that. If you do use a pattern paper, you don't even have to do any pattern paper. And then when this goes up, it overlaps. So how it overlaps is if I open it, you see I have it lined up on the edge. You can see it on the inside, but it overlaps that rounded. So I don't have to have a different front for every single one. I just need to change that front piece. And this is why we have this extra piece. So all you want to do is you could add glue here. I think it's always easier to add it to to the frame because I've added it to this and I've dropped them before so I tried to, to add it to the item I want to glue it to uh, most of the time. So this is the cat we had I don't even know so many years ago. I think she's been gone since oh let's say maybe 2005 something like that. So I make sure this is oriented correctly. I'm going to just line it up on the edges. And when I'm adding glue to the frame itself, that means no glue is going in the place that it goes beyond that round. So just getting that set in place. So you may want to do this before you get a photo in, but I wanted to demonstrate with photos. On this one, I already have that back piece on. So we're going to glue this. The other one, I don't have this one glued yet. I don't have this one. I have it little glue dots. 
that are at the corners so I can open it up and change the photo and you can't tell so that's whatever temporary means you want to use velcro or anything else you could do that then this one I'm going to add this back piece to fold it up oh let me glue this shut first so when you glue the shut I would just go around the edge below the photo so this this photo is not going to be removed now so this is a permanent frame again if I wanted to make for somewhere it got squished or decided I wanted to highlight a different animal then I would uh, just make another frame this, these are actually super easy to make so I'm going to flip it over and then we'll add the easel to it so you can see the different ways you can utilize this so this, I could go, also I could go like this. Um, the other thing you could do is weld it in. For let's just say you had this file, you could actually weld it to the frame um, using your software. Uh, it's called Weld in Cricut or um, Unite and other programs, but it's just different things. So I want to put, I'm just going to put Meow at the top. Maybe I'll just do it on the left here. Or you could put their names. So if you had like a, like, I'm have mostly animals, so I don't don't have any children. These are my kids. But if you wanted to put a name of somebody, you could do that too. But you can see the difference in the frames. And then we'll go ahead and glue this on. And I'm just aligning it right here, the cut line, then up, up top there, the other cut line. And before you start like putting that, make sure that's good and dry. So this is an easy way to give somebody a, a nice picture or you could gift them the frame and put everything on front top and maybe tell them how to close it up. You could use keep it hinged so they can put their own full fo photo so it would be a fun thing. Or just put like a Christmas photo, anything like that would be a nice uh, temporary use of it. So we have these three different versions and you can see it can make them so different. And if you do like this video please uh, Give me a little thumbs up below and I do hope you enjoyed this project and thank you so much for watching.